Hello and welcome back to the channel. Tonight is another takeover night and answering my call, another creator called Common Sense Criticism has come forward and stepped into the breach and helped me out by producing a video about Nathan Thompson. I hope you enjoy it. I will put a link to Common Sense Criticism's channel right up here. So do make sure you check out his channel, have a look around, and maybe give him a subscribe. So let's get to it then. Common Sense Criticism, the channel is yours. Roll VT. Hey everybody, welcome to another video. This one is going to be a bit different because it's not on my channel. I want to give a huge thank you to Mr. Sensible for having me create this video to help him out during the time he'll be away for his daughter's wedding. I'd like to give her my congratulations and sincerely wish her and her new husband and the family they create the very best of luck and a long happy life together. Now on to the topic at hand. I'm sure by now you're all familiar with Nathan Thompson. You might know him as the shirtless, bouncy golf ball mallet guy, or the flurf that makes videos from different couches that he sleeps on but doesn't own, or the flurf that has such an inflated sense of self-importance he literally needed a bodyguard just to walk past Team Skeptic at the international circle jerk of stupidity in Texas back in November. Yeah, that guy. Well, he's back with another video, apparently shot in his living room, showcasing his unique talent to bounce golf balls while reciting all of the incorrect information he's memorized. Thankfully, he does it in alphabetical order so we don't get extra confused along the way. He rattles his stuff off pretty fast, and a lot of it is just single words that he hopes his flock won't understand and won't actually look up. Like always, their eyes will just glaze over and they'll go right to the comments section and tell him how wonderful he is and how proud they are that he's spreading the truth while he's actually not saying anything at all. That's the thing about Flat Earth Priest con men. They don't have to say a lot to execute their cons. They just have to have the right audience. I'm not going to cover everything he says because frankly, a lot of it is just nonsense single words that don't even relate to the shape of the Earth. And for time's sake, it would literally make the video 30 minutes long explaining how every word he says is wrong. So I'll just hit the high points as fast as possible. Well, all right, Nathan, do your worst. Started off the second law of thermodynamics, entropy, high pressure system moves to lower pressure systems. Earth is a closed system. That means matter cannot go in and out. So when the heliocentric priests tell you they go to heaven in a rocket, don't believe them. Well, you're off to a great start. The Earth isn't a closed system, and you, like many flurf priests, don't understand the second law of thermodynamics, but you just love to say it because it makes you feel smart. Abyssal planes, accelerometer, Aries failure, airplane level flight, the Federal Airline Administration trains pilots on a target generation facility, which not only assumes a flattened stationary Earth, but negates a gravity vector. Abyssal plains are flat spots in the deep, deep ocean floor. That doesn't prove flat Earth. Aries' failure was trying to prove the Earth stationary by proving the wrong assumption that light needs a medium to travel through called the ether. It isn't stationary, and the ether isn't real. The target generation facility is a simulation that trains pilots on dealing with air traffic and radar signals. Ambient light, alphine waves, ancient civilizations, Angular size of Mercury, anti-corpuscular rays, Antarctica pictures, Antarctic treaty. It's a perimeter, guys. It's not an island on the bottom of a ball. One thing Flurf priests love to mention is perspective and how that proves that the sun doesn't actually set, but just gets so small you can't see it anymore. This, of course, is hogwash. 
However, anti-corpuscular rays are a great example of how perspective can play tricks on your eyes. They're actually parallel, but look like they're not, and Flurf priests use this as a proof that the sun is local and small. He's obviously never read the Antarctic Treaty. Honestly, I don't know if he can read or not, but if he can read, he certainly hasn't read the treaty. Azimuthal equidistant maps used by the United States Geological Survey, they'll call it a stereographic or orthographic or whatever, but all maps were made flat and then turned into balls. Astronauts should not be drowning in space. That's ridiculous. I've heard a bunch of different answers from NASA employees. I've heard it's saliva. I've heard it's sweat. I've heard it's malfunction from their water cooling apparatus. They're just a bunch of double speaking, lying thieves. Maps start out flat because paper is flat. Azimuthal equidistant projection maps are used by the surveyors to map distances from a single point to any other point on the map. They don't work from other points to other points. No astronauts that I could find have ever drowned in space. They have water for drinking in their suits for spacewalks and sometimes that system malfunctions. The problem with EVAs is they just can't wipe the water away from their faces. They have a helmet on. So yes, a small collection of water could potentially enter the nasal passages of an astronaut and cause them to drown. Your personal incredulity doesn't mean they're lying, it just means you don't believe it. Bardet Krenz is the world record photograph. Bedford level, Bell's theorem, explains light's polarization during a lunar eclipse. Bible supports a geocentric, non-moving Earth. The Big Dipper has two stars that always point towards Polaris. And yet buildings don't lean away from you. Bridges use plumb bobs that are always parallel to one another and perpendicular to the earth. The world record photograph was taken at a height of 2,820 meters. And with that in the calculation, plus refraction, the picture doesn't prove flatness, but illustrates that when your altitude is very high, you can see very long distances. Bedford Level has been debunked countless times as a bad experiment. The Bible is definitely not a book I'd reference for any scientific information. If you give the Big Dipper a few thousand more years, it won't be like that. The Verrazano Narrows Bridge was designed with curvature of the earth in mind, and the tops of the towers are one and five eighths inches farther away from each other than the bases. Buoyancy and density is why when you take something out of equilibrium and you drop it, it either goes up or it goes down. Canadian Geodetic Survey, uh, Cavendish is not an experiment. There's no naturally occurring phenomenon. Ah, buoyancy. I asked Nathan to explain the equation for buoyancy in a live chat one time. He banned me from the chat. In case anyone is curious, the equation for buoyancy has gravity in it. And as we all know, gravity is lies from the devil. Also, Nathan, what gives objects the directional acceleration to go either up or down? Why is it ev never sideways? The Cavendish experiment is an experiment. Sorry to break it to you. There is no Coriolis at all whatsoever. The atmosphere is not a secondary reference frame moving separately from the Earth. We already talked about that with airplane level flight assumes a non-rotating Earth. That's why journey times for east to west travels are not varying drastically from journey times the opposite direction. No Coriolis? <laughs> okay. The atmosphere can be a secondary reference frame depending on your altitude. Sure, flight times differ. Depending on the direction and speed of wind and altitude of the flight, they can differ dramatically, just not really due to the rotation of the Earth below the airplane. Daytime lunar eclipses, daytime full moons, which never have a specular highlight, um, eye-level airplane flight, equinoxes. One thing flat Earth can't predict nor explain is eclipses. The moon doesn't have a specular highlight because it's very rough. If it was smoother, it would. Wolfie6020 and Bob the Science Guy both have videos showing that the horizon isn't at eye level when you're in the air. Another thing that Flurfs can't ever explain to me is what mechanism causes the local sun to shift between its orbit of the different tropics every six months to cause the seasons. Electrodynamic tethers that NASA uses and emergency airplane flights. Famous explorers, Pahagas Picard, Captain Cook, fauna and flora, it's different in the north and south. Fiber optic submarine communication cables is what 98% of data is moved around the world with. Now they'll say it's 80%, but whatever. Then they use temporary helium balloons, ground-based towers, and modified U-2 spy planes. 
None of that can be considered proof of a flat Earth. Can I get an amen? Boo! Nope. You got, when the field of view is greater than 70 miles, you see one degree of Earth's arc or Earth's curvature, and the horizon is always flat. Gimbal base, galvanic cells, geographic range tables from the U.S. Coast Guard list distances at sea level that would be impossible on a globe. Those range tables take into consideration an average refraction amount which do pretty much line up with what you'd see in reality. This varies a lot because the amount of refraction also varies a lot depending on the weather. Gravitational anomalies, glass is made flat using molten metal because all metals are flat. It's a property of fluid statics, ladies and gentlemen. When large bodies of water are at rest, the surface is flat and level to the container. Gravitational anomalies? I thought gravity wasn't real. I don't even understand what he's trying to say here considering the fluid statics definition he cites mentions atmospheric pressure, which is something that flat earths don't believe in. Also, the oceans don't really have a container per se, just this. Then you have the green flash, proves that when the sun sets it's actually still above the horizon. No, it proves that the atmosphere acts like a prism. Notice the sun being almost completely obstructed by the curvature of the earth. Isn't it interesting that he didn't mention that? Got Hall's effect sensors. Hutchinson effect, hot spots from the sun, helicopters and hot air balloons do not experience a rotating earth underneath them. That's because the altitude that they fly at is low enough for the air to be dragged by the ground. Thus, they're moving the same speed as the ground that they're flying above until the helicopter starts moving or the wind moves the balloon. Jet streams, they actually took it off the jet stream website, the flat earth map, because it just looked too friggin' cool. Kansas is flatter than a pancake. Laser experiments, lighthouses, local light illumination, Lorenz contraction, molten metals would melt in the thermosphere, meteor showers, Mickelson Morley experiment, the Mickelson Gale experiment. Molten metals would melt? Uh, meteor showers? How about meteorites hitting the earth? Which they do which proves that there is no dome. Mickelson-Morley and Mickelson-Gale both tried and failed to prove the existence of the ether. The northern pole star never changes relative to its position with all the other stars. And there's no time lapses in the south, ever. Uh, stars don't intersect the marine horizon. So then you got the Navy has a rail gun. OCOM's Razor, Orbiter's Paradox, Operation High Jump, Operation Fishbowl, Operation Paperclip, Project Silvertooth. Stars' positions move very, very slowly because they're very, very far away. The rest of that has nothing to do with the shape of the Earth. Over the horizon radar in Russia that can see the east coast of the U.S. Parabolic rocket launches. Guys, quantum levitation. That and uh, electrostatic are the only orbits you'll ever see. Never seen a gravitational orbit in my life, neither of you, NASA employees, just throw their hands in the air when you ask them for proof of gravitational orbit. And then they ask you if you believe in the phony, hoaxy, harness-ridden, CGI glitched, blasting 17,000 miles an hour international fake station located in the National Buoyancy Laboratory in Texas. Woo, star trails are circular. They should look like an Etch-a-Sketch on crack. Over the horizon radar uses different wavelengths to achieve longer distances than standard microwave radar. Shortwave radar bounces signals off the ionosphere and low frequency waves follow the refraction and curvature of the Earth. Nothing to do with flat Earth. That's called a gravity roll to take some of the strain off the structure of the spacecraft as they gain speed and to get them lined up to enter orbit. Only orbits you'll ever see Never seen a gravitational orbit? What? What about these moons orbiting Jupiter? Star trails should look like an Etch-a-Sketch on crack? They're circular because of the rotation of the Earth. You're the only thing on crack in this video. We got a specular highlight, guys. The water reflects light. Perfect mirror. There is no light diffusion. If the surface was convex, we would not see a sunset dance all the way to the horizon line.
NASA uses harnesses, guys, and CGI and augmented reality and hairspray and salinated pools. You lack the ability to understand scale. That's pretty obvious. And your personal incredulity doesn't mean anything. It certainly doesn't prove anything. We shouldn't be able to see Venus and Mercury at night, by the way. Yeah, you can only see them within an hour or two of sunset or sunrise. But when they are there, they're the brightest objects in the sky, pretty much. Well, that does it for old Nathan Thompson and his terrible list of proofs. I don't know about you guys, but I was really hoping he'd drop one of those hammers on his toes. Anyway, thanks again, Mr. Sensible. I really appreciate you having me make this video for you. I hope your vacation's going great. I hope the wedding goes fantastic. And I can't wait to have you back. Thanks ever so much for that common sense. That was brilliant. Nathan Thompson really riles me. So thank you for stepping in and doing that. I appreciate it. So once again, don't forget to check out his channel. Link will also be in the description below. And uh, maybe give him a subscribe. So before I go, I'd just like to say big thanks to all my patrons. As always, massive thanks to all my patrons, including new patrons, Corpus Defectus, Tiffany Hall, Erebathron, Bardtail, Francis Cimenti, William Foley, Alice Vangstrom, John Roswell and TechBlog and my very latest patron, Pyro Kitty Cat. Thank you all so very much. Shut up and sit down.